Good afternoon. Welcome to Midcap Radar. I'm Reema Tendulkar. With me is Ekta Batra, and these are the top stories we're tracking this Monday afternoon. Stocks drift after a strong open as a surge in crude oil prices dampens the sentiment. Autos, banks lead the gains, while IT and FMCG drags. Karnataka Bank and Karur Vyasa Bank slip in trade on week Q4 updates, which while CSB Bank gains in trade as deposits grow 20 percent to 24,505 crores. Big auto wins boost stocks. RBNL secures a letter of award for a project worth 1,200 crore rupees. Tejas Networks bags a near 700 crore order from BSNL, while Ashoka Bilkon secures a project worth 285 crore rupees from the railways. Gas stocks MGL and IGL correct after the government keeps APM gas prices unchanged till further orders. Hello and welcome to the show. Well, we do have a lot which is moving in terms of specific stocks at this point in time. We did talk about a, co a couple of these broader market stocks which are reacting uh, to order wins. So case in point would be something like an RVNL which has jumped up around 8.7%. We also have a couple of others such as... Uh, Pages Networks, which is in focus today. So that stock is up around 5-odd percent. It surpassed around 600-odd rupees. Now, talking about a couple of other smaller stocks, uh, there is a lot which is moving, maybe not too much in terms of volumes as well, considering that it is, um, you know, multiple holidays this week. We have a holiday in tomorrow's, uh, uh, tomorrow in terms of trade. So that actually closes out a little bit in terms of participation. So maybe we need to see more volume participation. But as of now, lot of price participation, larger stocks are seeing a lot of interest today. Uh, indeed, it's a short but a very important week, right? In terms of the news flow, we're already reacting to the auto numbers, but banking updates are coming through. Real estate updates, typically even they, uh, in the first week, give you an indication of the volume, the value of uh, uh, sales that have taken place in the first quarter, and plus a slew of brokerages in terms of IT expectations have also come through over the last couple of days. And not to forget, to cap it all off on the 6th uh, of April, we've got the Monetary Policy Committee, so that's going to take center stage in terms of the big news. But let's talk about the mid-cap movers. Vivek joins in and he's going to take us through the mid-caps and small caps moving around in trade. Vivek. Well, uh, good afternoon. You know, it's a session where we're actually seeing quite a few mid-cap move, very strong volumes, a lot of strong price action, especially, you know, where there has been backing as far as news flow is concerned as well. SML ISILDU on the back of strong numbers up 14% in the session today. JBM Auto 2 up almost 8%. Garthi, after a while, we are seeing quite a bit of a pop as far as this particular name is concerned. Interestingly, one section, you know, which is seeing a bit of a pop in today's trading session, chemical companies, you know, fair chem organics, uh, Lakshmi organics, uh, make money has seen a bit of a cool off, but that too was up in today's trading session. Uh, some of the stocks that are moving higher on the back of very strong volume action, uh, deep industries are beneficiary of high oil prices, both, you know, the auto ancillary names, Precol as well as Minda Corporation, today, after a while, are seeing one leg higher move. On the other hand, some of the stocks that are moving lower, the back of negative news flow, Royal Orchid down almost 12% in today's trading session, and Sandar Technologies today down on strong volumes. Uh, lastly, you know, the entire OMC pack uh, need to address it on the back of, uh, you know, strong volume back price fall, IOCL, HPCL, as well as BPCL today, amongst the largest losers in the trading session. Okay. All right, Vivek. Thanks very much for that. So a lot happening in terms of specific stocks. So good time then to get Rahul Sharma of Equity 99 Advisors for a technical check on the markets. Rahul, hi. Welcome to the show. If you could just uh, start by giving us some sense in terms of how you would approach both the Nifty as well as the Bank Nifty uh, on a week weekly basis, considering that we have a lot of holidays this week, but the global markets are still trading. Yes, definitely. Uh, first of all, good afternoon and uh, thank you for having me on the show. Yes, see, definitely for the markets, we have seen some profit booking uh, in the index, but stock specific action is very much evident. We are witnessing good buying position in mid and small caps, especially. And Nifty above 17,300 is a beautiful uh, site, uh, especially after such turmoil, which we have seen in, in 10 15 sessions. Uh, the long jump which we have witnessed in the last session was very much strong and some consolidation after the jump. Uh, uh, looks really healthy for me, uh, for the markets, uh, and this consolidation might continue. Uh, some strong uh, support for the market, which is placed at 17,300, followed by 17,250, uh, will be the supports. And uh, see, the downside looks very much limited to me. 
and I think uh, we are getting ready for the next uh, leg upside, which is placed near between 70,500 and 70,800 levels. So I think market is uh, waiting and uh, for, for the next uh, move. And talking about Bank Nifty, it looks a little challenging for me uh, because I feel uh, I'll be more comfortable when Bank Nifty will see above uh, 41,000 levels uh, as it is a major supply zone. Uh, so either I would rather wait and watch for the indexes. Support level for Bank Nifty is placed at 40,600 on the immediate basis, followed by 40,500 and 40,350 zone for Bank Nifty. What about uh, individual stocks? You are expecting the indices to push higher at the in Nifty as well as the Nifty Bank level. What about the stocks? Would you go with long ideas today? Yes, definitely. Beautiful uh, stocks uh, coming up with breakouts. First selection is Federal Bank. From the PSU banking basket, Federal Bank uh, is, is my first selection. Beautiful chart setup with strong fundamentals, available at, at a very good risk-to-reward ratio. Uh, you have to keep a strict stop loss at 130 levels. Currently, it is trading near 135. The upside targets are 145 for a positional trade in Federal Bank. And second selection is Anantraj Limited, uh, which is trading near 125, 126 level. The technical setup is very much bullish. Stock has been has given a horizontal line breakout on daily and weekly charts. Stock has been making higher top and higher bottom formation. So it's a buy on current levels with a stop loss of 120 on strict basis. And the targets will be 140 for one and large. Okay, all right. We're going to let you go on that note. Thanks very much, Rahul, for joining in and taking us through all of those technical picks. I uh, need to take a short break. But up next, we'll have the management of IRB Infra. Welcome back. IRB Private Invit listed today. This is the third entity in the IRB Infrastructure Group to get listed. Virendra Maiskar, the CMD of IRB Infrastructure, now joins us on the show now. Uh, Mr. Maiskar, um, you know, afternoon and thanks so much for joining in. We understand that now even private invits necessarily need to get listed. But can you now explain what the difference is between your private invit and your public invit? Good afternoon. Uh, sure, I would like to uh, give a brief detail of the differences. So, as you very correctly said, private invites uh, were allowed to remain unlisted till now. But the regulator has now come out with a uh, clarification that they want all the private unlisted invites to get listed. And as per the requirement as a good corporate governance, we have taken this step and now uh, made the private unlisted invite a listed invite. Uh, so, uh, we have uh, one major investor here, which is GIC Singapore, holding 49% and rest of the... Uh, the major idea uh, for getting this invites listed was to bring in more transparency and uh, more disclosures. Uh, and that objective, I believe, will get uh, very well met. Uh, as far as the invite uh, sponsor or the invite in itself is concerned, uh, what brings uh, uh, for the invit on table is the ability to now tap the bond market because it's, it's now a listed entity and uh, one can look at refinancing the debt in a more efficient manner now that it's a listed invit. That is the gain that the invit would have while uh, the regulator gets to have more clarity and more transparency on board. Okay, all right. So it would definitely be beneficial in terms of raising funds for uh, the company. But uh, before we get back to more details with regards to the performance of the private and we just wanted a clarification with regards to the Mumbai Pune Expressway. Reports have indicated that there's an 18% uh, toll hike which has been undertaken. Uh, could you clarify on the same? Yes, so uh, as far as the toll tariff increase is concerned, it is an annual exercise as far as NH national highways are concerned. And for the specific asset which you are asking, that is Bombay Pune Expressway, uh, it plays out every three years. So while NHI uh, assets tend to see a tariff revision of 5-6% annually, 
In case of Mumbai Pune Expressway, because it plays out once in three years, it 18 percent in one go, and all the tariff revisions across all the projects have been played out from 1st April, and has been made effective. Okay, so indeed there's been an 18 percent hike in the Mumbai uh, Pune Expressway. But that's the once in a three year uh, sort of hike which has been undertaken. But I just had one follow up. Is it the highest hike that you've probably taken in recent times? Oh, I think Bombay Pune Expressway we have been managing since 2004. And every three years we have undergone this exercise of 18% uh, tariff revision. So frankly it's not a new thing uh, as is being talked about. Every three years uh, the tariffs have moved uh, up by 18% and if you look at it in a, as an annual exercise um, uh, people don't need to pay higher tariff for at least three years and then you have right. one, one in, uh, uh, you have the up, uptick only once. Is this 18% every three years is the amount fixed this number of 18% or yes. is it variable based on factors? Yes that's correct. So it's no. fixed. So, so unlike uh, NHI where you have the tariff linked to WPI here the tariff is fixed for the entire duration. So every three years what would be the tariff that one has mm. to uh, put into action is known up front. So now even in FI27 the tariff hike will be 1st of April you know, 2026 for instance, three years later. There will be another tariff hike of 18% only. Is that correct? So, as far as the next tariff is concerned, tariff hike is concerned, for our present contract, there is no more tar tariff hike stipulated. Okay. So, this stagnates at this level. Okay. I just wanted to talk about the private invit. Uh, can you just tell us about uh, the toll collection? What exactly is it tracking at? Uh, you know, I was looking at your Feb numbers. It seemed to be quite strong at over 25% year on year. That's correct. So, uh, as you know, private invit was incorporated in 2019 between IRB and uh, we had GIC as the investor. And at that time, we had nine projects as a part of the invit structure. Uh, since then, we have uh, got one more project into the private invit, uh, which is again a four to six lane asset uh, playing, uh, being constructed in Bengal. And uh, all these ten assets are now part of the private invit, and the nine assets which were under construction when the invit was formed have since then been completed and uh, all the projects are now operational doing well and uh, if you look at the structure of the invit today it's uh, a very um, i would say low le low labored uh, invit which will have surplus uh, getting generated from year 1 and um, it, it's it's going to be a, a very very a strong platform for IRB going forward from here. How did you arrive at the valuations while listing this uh, private invit? And how would the valuations compare with the public entity? So there are, uh, yes. So uh, there are parameters to decide on the valuation. So there is a third party valuation which was done and that was further validated by the trust uh, shareholders. Uh, and that has been made uh, applicable uh, at, at which the units would now trade. Uh, there are there is a one good parameter today in the market to compare the valuations in such ki kind of illiquid uh, structures and uh, you will appreciate that uh, the closest uh, one can go in comparables would be NHI TOT projects because in a NHI TOT project what happens is somebody goes and bids for a TOT he is actually uh, paying for uh, buying a bunch of assets uh, what already are in existence and if one goes by that parameter, even today, uh, roughly, if you say the upfront payment plus capex involved, uh, most of the NHI TOTs uh, have got uh, uh, bid out at around 17 to 18 times of their first year revenue. And if you okay. look at private invit today, um, uh, as per the valuation report, and now that the projects are operational, uh, for FY24, we would see around 24, uh, 20, uh, 2,450 crores of uh, top line revenue and a net revenue post premium of around 1,800 crores. So if you look at that as a parameter and uh, look at the valuation at 17 times uh, of uh, first year uh, to FY24 revenue, uh, the valuation of 27,000 crores less debt of around 10,000 crore, it comes to around 17,000 crore is the valuation that gets ascribed for this platform.
Okay, just quickly, you did mention that this will help you tap the bond markets more easily, refinancing of debt. What is the debt on the private invids books right now and uh, what is the plan when it comes to any kind of fundraising? So private invid, uh, and the debt on the books is around 10,000 crores. So this 10,000 crores debt is something which we can now refinance and uh, 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 push back the amortization, have higher cash release uh, to improve the distribution of the invit. So this will be few of the advantages that the invit would now enjoy now that it is a listed invit. Okay. All right. So we're going to leave it on that note. Thanks very much for joining in and talking to us. So that's IRB Infra discussing a whole host of uh, developments in the company, 18% hike in terms of toll taken for the Mumbai Pune Expressway. But remember, that happens once in three years separately. Their private invit has also been listed. We'll uh, take a short break. On the other side, more stocks and focus. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Well, let's focus on our segment Midcap Spotlight. Vivek is here with a focus on RVNL, which is surged today. It's bagged multiple orders and is in focus in today's trading session on account of an LOA worth around 1,271 odd crores. Vivek is here with more. Well, that's right. You know, so RVNL actually is the stock in focus. What's actually happened over here is that uh, the company has managed to bag and get onto its multiple orders in FI23. So if you take it, uh, you know, from March 30th onwards, you know, the company has uploaded multiple notifications to the exchanges. On March 30th, uh, remember, the company which was earlier declared as the lowest bidder along with the, you know, Russian JV partner for the one-day Bharat trains, uh, they've gone ahead and put that onto their book. So it's now part of the order book. Uh, this is for the one-day Bharat at trains at manufacturing come the maintenance order. March 31st, the company along with its consortium partner got the letter of award for a highway project in Jharkhand, project cost of close to 1,272 crore. March 31st, another order win, you know, emerged as the lowest bidder for an expressway contract in West Bengal, cost of the project is close to 721 crore. Remember, RBNL has consistently maintained that they, you know, expect to maintain their order book above the 1 lakh crore mark. And this is something that is playing out, especially in the last week of FI23, where a lot of the order wins uh, for a lot of the infrastructure players are getting booked. Thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, gas stocks like MG and IGL also correct after the government keeps the APM gas price unchanged till further orders. The street, remember, was expecting Kirit Pare Committee's recommendations of price hikes to be accepted by the 1st of April. Surbhi is here with more on that. Surbhi. Hi, thanks for that. So, IGL and MGL are in focus today. That is because government has kept the APM gas price unchanged at $8.57 per MMBTU till further notice. Now, there were expectations that the Kirit Parrot Committee recommendations will be accepted by April 1st, which will get down the APM prices to $6.57. To CNBC TV 18, that they expect the recommendations to be cleared soon. Now, the recommendations were that there would be a price ban for gas from oil fields and the price cents per MMBTU. The domestic gas prices should be linked to crude prices. That was also another recommendation. They recommended removal of caps on gas prices in three years. City gas distributors and fertilizer sectors should be, hold on to, should be held to top priority for allocation in the intermediate period. Now, City says, while the continued delay could create a near-term uh, overhang for the CGD stocks, the pause in prices on a provisional basis suggests that the Cabinet approval of the recommendations could just be a matter of time. Any modifications to these recommendations would need to be monitored. The continued uh, stance on government towards the CGD sector is favourable and they prefer MGL and IGL. Their top gas picks is Gale, which according to them is also a key beneficiary from the lower APM prices. Jeffrey say while the delay was unexpected, they expect the new price notification to be announced in the near future. Thank you very much for that. Another story that we're tracking for you is hospital stocks. The Guru Gram administration has reserved 
20% of beds at multi-speciality hospitals. Ekta, what's uh, the impact? Is this uh, far-reaching consequences? Uh, well, you know, there is a lot of uh, details with regards to this. First, I'll start with the news. And currently, what we do understand is that it's from an Indo-Asian news service net report that the local administration of Gurugram has reserved 20% of beds at multi-speciality hospitals. This is for the economically weaker section and those below the poverty line. So, for example, if the treatment cost of the patient in this category comes up to 5 lakh, then the treatment is going to be free. If the bill amount is between rupees 5 lakh to 10 lakh, then they only have to pay 10% of the normal charges. Now, I've spoken to multiple hospitals, uh, hospital companies, uh, and the feedback that I've picked up is that only those with concessional land are going to be impacted. So, for example, if the government did give you land at a cheaper cost and you built a hospital there, it always comes with some amount of conditions. So this is probably what is being implemented at this point in time. And another example is Delhi, which has around 10% reservation for the economically weaker section for all land that was allotted to trust hospitals. Now, such deal terms that we are discussing right now are known when the terms are signed with the government for the government allotted land. So it doesn't come as a surprise for a hospital company and it's not something new which is implemented. In fact, for this Gurugram policy, which has now been implemented, in fact, uh, which we are talking about is around three to five months old. Now, companies such as Fortis have been complying with this. The likes of Max have indicated that they are not impacted. The likes of Apollo have said that they are not impacted because they have paid the commercial value for the land. Now, hospitals with NCR operations, Medanta is likely to be one of the uh, hospitals which are expected to be impacted because they have a total of over 2,500 beds across five cities. And Gurugram, they have 1,391 beds, 271 ICU beds there. Uh, Fortis they have Fortis FMRI, where it's around 300-bed multi-speciality hospital in Gurugram. So that, according to most of the people that I've spoken to, would probably be impacted. Fortis as well as Medanta. I did reach out to a lot of the companies. I'm still need to hear back from a couple of them, such as Medanta. But the general feedback that I've got is that it is definitely only limited to uh, government-allotted land. And a large part of this, maybe most of it, is already implemented by companies in Gurugram. Hence, uh, the impact is likely to be limited. Okay, that's a story that we will be tracking closely for you. But right now, it's a wrap on Midcap Radar. Thank you for watching Inside Out when we return.